Hello students, in this video I will tell you some important features regarding the lateral ventricle. Now when you will see the lateral ventricle, lateral ventricles are present into the cerebral hemisphere. So this is your cerebral hemisphere where you can see that this is the lateral ventricle cavity. Now this is the septum pellucidum which separates the right and left lateral ventricle. Now these lateral ventricle opens through this foramen of Munro into this midline cavity is known as third ventricle. Now this third ventricle is mainly present into the diencephalon. So you can see that this is the thalamus and this is the hypothalamus and this is the interthalamic adhesion. Clear? So this is your midline cavity which is known as third ventricle and this is the foramen of Munro which is connected with, with the lateral ventricle. Now if you see the foramen of Munro, foramen of Munro lies below this fornix. Now you can see that this is the fornix and this fornix is a continuation of your hippocampus that we will see in a while. Clear? Now to see this lateral ventricle you have to cut and open this whole cavity to see the all parts of the lateral ventricle. So I have cut it in such a way that you can see the whole part of the lateral ventricle. Now here you can see that this is the anterior horn. This anterior horn is uh, extending into the frontal lobe of the brain. Clear? This is the posterior horn. Now this posterior horn part you can see here it is going into the occipital lobe here. Now this is the inferior horn. This inferior horn is going into the temporal lobe. So this is the anterior horn, posterior horn, inferior horn. Now this part is known as central part or the body of your lateral ventricle. So what are the parts of lateral ventricle? Anterior horn, posterior horn, inferior horn and this central cavity or the central part or body of the lateral ventricle. Clear? Now the important thing is that you can see that this is the corpus callosum. This corpus callosum is making the roof of your anterior horn as well as the central body or the central part. Now in the floor, you will find some very important feature. Now here you can see that as I already told you, this is the diencephalon. So this part which is medially is known as thalamus. So this is your thalamus which is forming the floor of the uh, central part of lateral ventricle and just lateral to that, this projection which you are able to see is known as caudate nucleus. Now this caudate nucleus is also having the three part. Anterior part which is in the anterior horn is known as head. This is known as body and then it is taking a curve which is known as tail of the caudate nucleus. Clear? So what are the parts of caudate nucleus? Head, tail, head, body and the tail. Now this body is lies just ad adjacent to the diencephalon or you can say just adjacent to the thalamus. Clear? Now this is the important thing to keep in mind that here we will have the choroid plexus. That choroid plexus enters through this area inside this ventricle and it is a source of the CSF. Now for entering of the choroid plexus there is a fissure. If you will place this cut part again there is a fissure. Now this fissure is lies below the fornix and through this fissure your choroid plexus enters inside the lateral ventricle. Clear? Now if you will see this inferior part of the cerebrum, now here this is the inferior surface of the temporal lobe where you will have this parahippocampal gyrus. This is known as parahippocampal gyrus. Now why it is known as parahippocampal gyrus? Because when you will open this and if you will see, you are able to see a very classical presentation like hippocampus and this is known as hippocampal area. Now in this hippocampal area, I think you are able to appreciate these pause like appearance which are known as pass hippocampus. These are the pass hippocampus and from the hippocampus you will have the continuation of the fornix which is an example of projection fiber. Clear? Now if you will see on this side of the hippocampus, you are able to see the gyrus which is known as dented gyrus and this dented gyrus is present on the outer side of the hippocampus. So here, this is the important thing to understand that so many times in exam you will have this inferior horn and this inferior horn is identified with this classical appearance of the hippocampus in the inferior horn of lateral ventricle. Clear? This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle which is extending inside this uh, occipital lobe. Clear? So these are the some important features about the lateral ventricle. Thank you.